Samizdat was a form of dissident activity across the Eastern Bloc in which individuals reproduced censored and underground publications by hand and passed the documents from reader to reader. This grassroots practice to evade official Soviet censorship was fraught with danger, as harsh punishments were meted out to people caught possessing or copying censored materials. Vladimir Bukovsky summarized it as follows. Samizdat, I write it myself, edit it myself, censor it myself, publish it myself, distribute it myself, and spend jail time for it myself. Topic. Name origin and variations Etymologically, the word Samizdat derives from Sam Russian, self, by oneself. And isdat Russian, isdat an abbreviation of izdatilstvo, izdatelstvo, publishing house, and thus means self-published. The Ukrainian language has a similar term, samvitiv, samvitiv from sam, self, and vidavnitstvo, publishing house. The Russian poet Nikolai Glaskov coined a version of the term as a pun in the 1940s when he typed copies of his poems and included the note samsebiezdit, samsebiezdit, myself by myself publishers. On the front page, Tamizdat refers to literature published abroad, tam tam, there, often from smuggled manuscripts. Topic: <laughs> Techniques. Samizdat copies of texts such as Mikhail Bulgakov's novel The Master and Margarita or Václav Havel's essay The Power of the Powerless were passed around among trusted friends. The techniques used to reproduce these forbidden texts varied. Several copies might be made using carbon paper, either by hand or on a typewriter. At the other end of the scale, mainframe printers were used during night shifts to make multiple copies, and books were at times printed on semi professional printing presses in much larger quantities. Before Glasnost, the practice was dangerous, because copy machines, printing presses, and even typewriters in offices were under control of the organization's first department, i.e., the KGB. Reference printouts for all of these machines were stored for subsequent identification purposes, if Samizdat output was found. Topic. Physical form Samizdat distinguishes itself not only by the ideas and debates that it helped spread to a wider audience but also by its physical form. The hand-typed, often blurry and wrinkled pages with numerous typographical errors and nondescript covers helped to separate and elevate Russian Samizdat from Western literature. The physical form of Samizdat arose from a simple lack of resources and the necessity to be inconspicuous. In time dissidents in the USSR began to admire these qualities for their own sake, the ragged appearance of Samizdat contrasting sharply with the smooth, well-produced appearance of texts passed by the censor's office for publication by the state. The form Samizdat took gained precedence over the ideas it expressed, and became a potent symbol of the resourcefulness and rebellious spirit of the inhabitants of the Soviet Union. In effect, the physical form of Samizdat itself elevated the reading of Samizdat to a prized clandestine act. Topic. Readership Samizdat originated from the dissident movement of the Russian intelligentsia, and most Samizdat directed itself to a readership of Russian elites. While circulation of Samizdat was relatively low, at around 200,000 readers on average, many of these readers possessed positions of cultural power and authority. Furthermore, because of the presence of dual consciousness, in the Soviet Union, the simultaneous censorship of information and necessity of absorbing information to know how to censor it, many government officials became readers of Samizdat. Although the general public at times came into contact with Samizdat, most of the public lacked access to the few expensive Samizdat texts in circulation, and expressed discontent with the highly censored reading material made available by the state. The purpose and methods of Samizdat may contrast with the purpose of the concept of copyright. Topic. History Self-published and self-distributed literature has a long history in Russia. Samizdat is unique to the post-Stalin USSR and other countries with similar systems. Under the grip of censorship of the police state, society turned to underground literature for self-analysis and self-expression. Samizdat books and editions 
Certain works published legally by the state-controlled media were practically impossible to find in bookshops and libraries and found their way into Samizdat. The first full-length book to be distributed as Samizdat was Boris Pasternak's 1957 novel Dr. Zhivago. Although the literary magazine Novi Mir had published ten poems from the book in 1954, a year later the full text was judged unsuitable for publication and entered Samizdat circulation. The novel One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solzhenitsyn had a similar fate and was widely distributed via Samizdat. At the outset of the Khrushchev thaw in the mid 1950s USSR, poetry became very popular and writings of a wide variety of known, prohibited, repressed, as well as young and unknown poets circulated among Soviet intelligentsia. A number of Samizdat publications began circulating that carried unofficial poetry. The Moscow Samizdat magazine Syntaxis (1959–1960) by writer Alexander Ginzburg, Vladimir Osipov's Boomerang (1960), and Phoenix (1961), produced by Yuri Galanskov and Alexander Ginzburg. The editors of these magazines were regulars at impromptu public poetry readings in 1958–61 on Mayakovsky Square in Moscow. The gatherings did not last long, as soon the authorities began clamping down on them. In the summer of 1961, several meeting regulars were arrested and charged with anti-Soviet agitation and propaganda. Article 70 of the RSFSR Penal Code, putting an end to most of the magazines. Not everything published in Samizdat had political overtones. In 1963, Joseph Brodsky was charged with social parasitism and convicted for being nothing but a poet. His poems circulated in Samizdat, with only four judged as suitable for official Soviet anthologies. In the mid-1960s, the Youngest Society of Geniuses, an unofficial literary group known by the acronym SMOG Samoy Molodoy Obshchestvo Geniev, the acronym also forms the Russian verb for I, he, one, could, issued an almanac titled The Sphinxes Sphinx -C and collections of prose and poetry. Some of their writings were close to Russian avant-garde of the 1910s to 1920s. The 1965 show trial of writers Yuli Daniel and Andrei Sinievsky, Sinievsky Daniel trial, charged with anti-Soviet agitation and propaganda and increased repressions marked the demise of the thaw and harsher times for Samizdat authors. The trial was carefully documented in a Samizdat collection called The White Book, 1966, compiled by Yuri Galanskov and Alexander Ginzburg. Both writers were later arrested themselves and sentenced to prison in what was known as the Trial of the Four. In the following years, some of the Samizdat content became more politicized and played an important role in the dissident movement in the Soviet Union. Topic. Samizdat periodicals The earliest Samizdat periodicals were short-lived and mainly literary in focus, Syntaxis Boomerang and Phoenix From 1964 to 1970, communist historian Roy Medvedev regularly published the political journal in Russian Politiskij Denevnik or Political Diary, which contained analytical materials that later appeared in the West. The longest running and best known Samizdat periodical was A Chronicle of Current Events. Haranika It was dedicated to defending human rights by providing accurate information about events in the USSR. Over 15 years from April 1968 to December 1982, 65 issues were published, all but two appearing in English translation. The anonymous editors encouraged the readers to utilize the same distribution channels in order to send feedback and local information to be published in the subsequent issues. The Chronicle was distinguished by its dry, concise style and punctilious correction of even the smallest error. Its regular rubrics were, "...arrests, searches, interrogations, extra-judicial persecution, in prisons and camps, Samizdat update, news in brief, and persecution of religion. Over time sections were added on the persecution of the Crimean Tatars, persecution and harassment in Ukraine, Lithuanian events, and so on. The Chronicle editors maintained that according to the 1936 Soviet Constitution, then in force, their publication was not illegal. The authorities did not accept the argument. Many people were harassed, arrested, imprisoned, or forced to leave the country for their involvement in the Chronicle's production and distribution. 
The periodical's typist and first editor Natalia Gorbanevskaya was arrested and put in a psychiatric hospital for taking part in the August 1968 Red Square protest against the invasion of Czechoslovakia. In 1974 two of the periodical's close associates Pyotr Yakur and Viktor Krasin were persuaded to denounce their fellow editors and the Chronicle on Soviet television. This put an end to the periodical's activities until Sergei Kovalev, Tatyana Kodorovich and Tatyana Velikanova openly announced their readiness to resume publication. After being arrested and imprisoned they were replaced, in turn, by others. Another notable and long-running publication was the Refusnik political and literary magazine, Evrei V. Sesser. Yevrei v SSSR, Jews in the USSR, founded and edited by Alexander Voronel and, after his imprisonment, by Mark Asbel and Alexander Luntz. The late 1980s, which were marked by an increase in informal organizations, saw a renewed wave of Samizdat periodicals in the Soviet Union. Publications that were active during that time included Glasnost edited by Sergei Grigoryants, Express Kronika Express Chronicle, edited by Alexander Podrabinik, Svobodnoy Slovo. Free Word, by the Democratic Union formed in May 1988, Levy Poverot, Left Turn, edited by Boris Kogarlitsky, Akritaya Zona, Open Zone, of Club Perestroika, Mercury, Mercury, edited by Elena Zelenskaya, and Chronograph, Chronograph, put out by a number of Moscow activists. Not all Samizdat trends were liberal or clearly opposed to the Soviet regime and the literary establishment. The Russian Party, was a very strange element of the political landscape of Leonid Brezhnev's era, feeling themselves practically dissidents. Members of the Russian party, with rare exceptions, took quite prestigious official positions in the world of writers or journalists, wrote Oleg Kashin in 2009. <laughs> Genres of Samizdat Samizdat covered a large range of topics, mainly including literature and works focused on religion, nationality, and politics. The state censored a variety of materials such as detective novels, adventure stories, and science fiction in addition to dissident texts, resulting in the underground publication of Samizdat covering a wide range of topics. Though most Samizdat authors directed their works towards the intelligentsia, Samizdat included lowbrow genres in addition to scholarly works. Hung Min Ju carried out a detailed analysis of an archive of Samizdat, Archive Samizdata, Archive Samizdata by Radio Liberty, sponsored by the U.S. Congress and launched in the 1960s, and reported that of its 6,607 items, 1% were literary, 17% nationalist, 20% religious, and 62% political, noting that as a rule, literary works were not collected there, so their 1% only 73 texts are not representative of their real share of circulation. <inaudible> <inaudible> literary In its early years, Samizdat defined itself as a primarily literary phenomenon that included the distribution of poetry, classic unpublished Russian literature, and famous 20th-century foreign literature. Literature played a key role in the existence of the Samizdat phenomenon. For instance, the USSR's refusal to publish Boris Pasternak's epic novel, Dr. Zhivago, due to its focus on individual characters rather than the welfare of the state, led to the novel's subsequent underground publication. The fact that Dr. Zhivago contained no overt messages of dissidence highlighted the clumsiness of the state's censorship process, which caused a shift of readership away from state-published material. Likewise, the circulation of Alexander Solzhenitsyn's famous work about the Gulag system, the Gulag Archipelago, promoted a Samizdat revival during the mid-1970s. However, because Samizdat by definition placed itself in opposition to the state, Samizdat works became increasingly focused on the state's violation of human rights, before shifting towards politics. Topic. Political. The majority of Samizdat texts were politically focused. Most of the political texts were personal statements, appeals, protests, or information on arrests and trials. Other political Samizdat included analyses of various crises within the USSR, and suggested alternatives to the government's handling of events. No unified political thought existed within Samizdat, rather, authors debated from a variety of perspectives. 
Samizdat written from socialist, democratic and Slavophile perspectives dominated the debates, socialist authors compared the current state of the government to the Marxist ideals of socialism, and appealed to the state to fulfill its promises. Socialist Samizdat writers hoped to give a «human face» to socialism by expressing dissatisfaction with the system of censorship. Many socialists put faith in the potential for reform in the Soviet Union, especially because of the political liberalization which occurred under Dubček in Czechoslovakia. However, the Soviet Union invasion of a liberalizing Czechoslovakia in the events of Prague Spring crushed hopes for reform and stymied the power of the socialist viewpoint. Because the state proved itself unwilling to reform, Samizdat began to focus on alternative political systems. Within Samizdat, several works focused on the possibility of a democratic political system. Democratic Samizdat possessed a revolutionary nature because of its claim that a fundamental shift in political structure was necessary to reform the state, unlike socialists who hoped to work within the same basic political framework to achieve change. Despite the revolutionary nature of the Democratic Samizdat authors, most Democrats advocated moderate strategies for change. Most Democrats believed in an evolutionary approach to achieving democracy in the USSR, and they focused on advancing their cause along open, public routes, rather than underground routes. In opposition to both democratic and socialist Samizdat, Slavophile Samizdat grouped democracy and socialism together as Western ideals that were unsuited to the Eastern European mentality. Slavophile Samizdat brought a nationalistic Russian perspective to the political debate and espoused the importance of cultural diversity and the uniqueness of Slavic cultures. Samizdat written from the Slavophile perspective attempted to unite the USSR under a vision of a shared glorious history of Russian autocracy and orthodoxy. Consequently, the fact that the USSR encompassed a diverse range of nationalities and lacked a singular Russian history hindered the Slavophile movement. By espousing frequently racist and anti-Semitic views of Russian superiority through either purity of blood or the strength of the Russian orthodoxy, the Slavophile movement in Samizdat alienated readers and created divisions within the opposition. <inaudible> Religious Predominantly Orthodox, Baptist, Pentecostalist, Catholic, and Adventist groups authored religious Samizdat texts. Though a diversity of religious Samizdat circulated, including three Buddhist texts, no known Islamic Samizdat texts exist. The lack of Islamic Samizdat appears incongruous with the large percentage of Muslims who resided in the USSR. Nationalist Jewish Samizdat importantly advocated for the end of repression of Jews in the USSR and expressed a desire for exodus, the ability to leave Russia for an Israeli homeland. Jewish Samizdat encouraged Zionism. The exodus movement also broached broader topics of human rights and freedoms of Soviet citizens. However, a divide existed within Jewish Samizdat between authors who advocated exodus and those who argued that Jews should remain in the USSR to fight for their rights. Crimean Tatars and Volga Germans also created Samizdat protesting the state's refusal to allow them to return to their homelands following Stalin's death. Ukrainian Samvidev opposed the assumed superiority of Russian culture over Ukrainian culture and condemned the forced assimilation of Ukrainians to the Russian language. In addition to Samizdat focused on Jewish, Ukrainian, and Crimean Tatar concerns, authors also advocated the causes of a great many other nationalities. Topic. Contraband audio Ribs, music on the ribs, bone records, or Rentgenizdat Rentgen referring to X-ray, and Izdat implying Samizdat were homemade phonograph records, copied from forbidden recordings that were smuggled into the country. Their content was Western rock and roll, jazz, mambo, and other music, and music by band émigrés. They were sold and traded on the black market. Each disc is a thin, flexible plastic sheet recorded with a spiral groove on one side, playable on a normal phonograph turntable at 78 rpm. They were made from an inexpensive, available material, used X-ray film. Each large rectangular sheet was trimmed into a circle and individually recorded using an improvised recording lathe. The discs and their limited sound quality resemble the mass-produced flexi-disc, and may have been inspired by it. 
Magnetisdat, less common, is the distribution of sound recordings on audio tape, often of underground music groups, bards, or lectures magnet referring to magnetic tape. Topic. Further influence After Bell Labs changed its Unix license to make dissemination of the source code illegal, the Lion's Book had to be withdrawn, but illegal copies of it circulated for years. The act of copying the Lion's Book was often referred to as Samizdat see Lion's Commentary on Unix 6th edition, with source code. In hacker and computer jargon, the term Samizdat was used for the dissemination of needed and hard to obtain documents or information. The hacker journal POC, GTFO calls its distribution permission Samizdat license. Topic: <laughs> Some Samizdat periodicals in the Soviet Union. Aya, a chronicle of current events. Chronicle of the Catholic Church in Lithuania Phoenix Syntaxis Topic. See also Censorship in the Soviet Union Eastern Bloc Media and Propaganda Gosizdat Human Rights in the Soviet Union Political Repression in the Soviet Union USSR anti-religious campaign 1970s minus 1987 Topic References Topic Sources Topic Further reading Topic Outsiders works Samizdat 1 La Voix de l'Opposition Communiste en URSS Samizdat 1 The Voice of the Communist Opposition in the USSR in French, Paris, Soy, 1969. ASIN B004QXXSO. Samizdat, Kronaka di una vita nuova nellers Samizdat, Chronicle of New Life in the USSR in Italian 2 ed. Milan, La Casa di Matriona. 1977-1975. The Press, Samizdat West. Time, 105 15, 14 April 1975. Woman and Russia, First Feminist Samizdat. Sheba Feminist Publishers, 1982. ISBN 0907179029. Allen, Charles. 1980. Trends in Economic Samizdat. The Fletcher Forum of World Affairs, 4, 93. Aaron, Leon, July August 2009. Samizdat in the 21st Century. Russia's New Literature of Crisis. Foreign Policy 173, 131-133. JSTOR 20684899. Bargorn, Frederick, Spring Summer 1983. Regime de Center Confrontation in the USSR, Samizdat and Western Views, 1972-1982. Studies in Comparative Communism, 16 1-2, 99-119. doi, 10.1016-0039-3592-83-90046-7. Bloom, Harry, June 1973. The End of Samizdat? The Soviet Union signs the Universal Copyright Convention. Index on Censorship, 2, 2, 3 to 18. DOI 10.1080/03064227308532216. Boyder, Albert. July 1972. Samizdat: Primary Source Material in the Study of Current Soviet Affairs. The Russian Review, 31, 3, 282 to 285. Doi 102307 JSTOR 128049. Bolt, John. 1986. Russian Samizdat Art Essays. Willis Locker and Owens Pub. ISBN 0930279042. Brun Zedjmiz, Julia. Autumn 1991. Messianic Consciousness as an Expression of National Inferiority, Chadayev and Some Samizdat Writings of the 1970s. Slavic Review. 53, 
doi 10.2307/2,499,860. JSTOR 2,499,860. Brun Zejmiz, Julia June 1996. Who are the enemies of Russia? The question of Russophobia in the Samizdat debate before Glasnost. Nationalities Papers, The Journal of Nationalism and Ethnicity, 24 169-197. doi.10.1080-00905999608408437. Bungs, Jintra September 1988. Joint political initiatives by Estonians, Latvians, and Lithuanians as reflected in Samizdat materials, 1969–1987. Journal of Baltic Studies. 19 3, 267–271. doi.10.1080-0162977880000181. Amy Samizdat, an alternative communications system in the Soviet Union. Harvard University. Daughtry, Martin Spring 2009. Sonic Samizdat, situating unofficial recording in the post-Stalinist Soviet Union. Poetics Today, 30 1, 27-65. doi, 10.1215-0333537200800002. Deagle, Anna May 1990. Human Rights and Literature, Solzhenitsyn and Pasternak. Theoria, A Journal of Social and Political Theory 75, 77-85. JSTOR 41802616. Duncan, Peter March 1988. The Fate of Russian Nationalism, The Samizdat Journal Vesh Revisited PDF. Religion in Communist Lands, 16 1, 36-53. Doi 10.1080/0963749880843131347. Archived PDF from the original on the 27th of June 2015. Earhart, Nelly. 2008. Samizdat in der Sovjetunion der 60 to 70 or Yara. Samizdat in the Soviet Union the 60 to 70s in German. Grin Verlag. ISBN 3640175425. Emerson, Susan December 1982. Writers Who Protest and Protesters Who Write, A Guide to Soviet Dissent Literature. Collection Building, 4 1, 21-33. doi, 10.1108, eb 23073 Feldbrugge, Ferdinand Joseph Maria 1976. Samizdat and Political Dissent in the Soviet Union. Review of Socialist Law, 2 1, 300. doi, 10.1163, 15730356 x 00256. Feldbrugge, Ferdinand Joseph Maria Samizdat and Political Dissent in the Soviet Union. Brill. ISBN 9028601759. Flores d'Arsais, Paolo. 1991. La rimozione permanente, il futuro della sinistra e la critica del comunismo, scritti 1971 to 1991. Permanent removal: the future of the left and the criticism of communism. The writings 1971 to 1991 in Italian. Marietti. ISBN 8821168980. Freiheit, Curatorium 1972. Samizdat, aus dem anderen Russland Russian Samizdat, Voices from the Other Russia in German. Bern, Schweizerisches Komitee zur Unterstützung der Schriftsteller und anderer Intellektueller in totalitären Staaten bei ihren Bemühungen in die Geistige Freiheit gemäß den Bestimmungen der Charta für Menschenrecht. OCLC 72880981. Graf, Bernd, Graf, Yuda 1990. Multinational und Multifon Literatur der Sojetunion, Literatur von Dissidenten und Sojetisch Untergrundliteratur, Slavisch, Albanisch und Ungaro Finnisch Sawi Nordisch Literatur aus den Jahren 1973-1989 Multinational and Multifon Literature of the Soviet Union, Literature of Dissidents and Soviet Underground Literature, Slavic, Albanian and Hungaro Finnish and Nordic Literature of 1973-1989 in German. Stuttgart, Hirsemann. 
ISBN 3777290203. OCLC 891918246. Greenfield, Richard. The Human Rights Literature of the Soviet Union. Human Rights Quarterly, 4, 124 136. Gregor, Gregor. Auf der Suche nach politischer Gemeinschaft, Oppositionelles Denken zur Nation im Ostmitteleuropäischen Samizdat 1976-1992 Orningssysteme Looking for Political Community, Oppositional Thinking to the Nation in the East Central European Samizdat Inventory Systems in German, De Gruder Oldenburg. ISBN 3110419777. Gribanov, Alexander, Cowell, Masha. Spring 2009. Samizdat according to Andropov. Poetics Today, 30, 89 106. doi 10.1215.0333537200080004. Kazimierz. Socialist Legality and Uncensored Literature in the Soviet Union. Case Western Reserve Journal of International Law, 10-299-321. Archived from the original on of April 2016. Hammersky, Hydrun Samizdat, Alternative Culture in Central and Eastern Europe from the 1960s to the 1980s. Bremen, Research Center for East European Studies at the University of Bremen. ISBN 3936604002. Horia, Hans Ulrich. 1980. Literatura y Dissidencia, de Mayakovsky a Solzhenitsyn Literature and Descent, From Mayakovsky to Solzhenitsyn in Spanish. Madrid, Rio Duero. ISBN 8430021515. Johnston, Gordon May 1999. What is the history of Samizdat? Social History. 24 115-133. doi.10.1080.0307102990856805A. Jacobson, Ernst 1984. Voices of Freedom, Samizdat. Europe Asia Studies. 56 4, 571 to 594 doi 10.1080/0966813042000220476 JSTOR 4147387 Kibazinskia, Ksenia 2012 Samizdat and Dissident Archives, Trends in Their Acquisition, Preservation, and Access in North American Repositories. Slavic and East European Information Resources, 13, 1, 3-25. doi, 10.1080, Kind Kovac, Frederica, Lebov, Jesse. Samizdat, Tamizdat, and Beyond, Transnational Media During and After Socialism. Bergen Books. ISBN 0857455850. Komaromi, Anne. Autumn 2004. The Material Existence of Soviet Samizdat. Slavic Review. 63 597-618. 1,520,346. JSTOR 1,520,346. Komaromi, Anne. Winter 2007. The Unofficial Field of Late Soviet Culture. Slavic Review. 66, 4, 605 629. doi 10.2307, 20,060,375. JSTOR 20,060,375. Komaromi, Anne. Spring 2012. Samizdat and Soviet Dissident Publics. Slavic Review. 71, 70-90. doi, 10.5612, Slavic Review, 71.1.0070.
JSTOR 10.5612, Slavic Review, 71.1.0070. Komaromi, Ann. Literary Samizdat and Samizdat Publics. Enthymema. Doi 10 13132037 to 2426 Komaromi, Ann 2015 Uncensored Samizdat Novels and the Quest for Autonomy in Soviet Dissidents Evanston Illinois Northwestern University Press ISBN 0810131862 Jugenij 1991 Samizdat und Alternative Press in der Sojetunion. Samizdat and Alternative Press in the Soviet Union. Publizistik. Virteljahrescheft für Kommunikationsverschung in German. 36 77-85. Cooper, Stephen September 1998. Perprintium. A Berlin Exhibition of Moscow Samizdat Books. Other Voices, 1 2. Kuzio, Teres 1989. Descent in Ukraine under Gorbachev, a collection of Samizdat documents. Ukrainian Press Agency. Lober, Dietrich September 1973. Samizdat under Soviet law. On the legal status of Russia's unofficial and unpublished writings. Index on censorship, 2, 3, 3-26. doi, 10.1080, 0306422733. Lorraine, Bernard. 1974. Samizdat. E. Losfeld. Mariniak, Irena. January 1989. Samizdat Today: A Review. Religion in Communist Lands. 17: 112 126. Doi: 10.1080/0963749890843141416. Mirson Aksanov, Mikhail, Shragan, Boris, eds. 1977. The Political, Social, and Religious Thought of Russian. Samizdat. An Anthology. Belmont, M.A., Nordland Publishing Company. ISBN 0913124133. Motley, Alexander. March 1978. USSR's Alternative Press. Index on Censorship, 7, 22-28. Doi 10.1080/0306422780853275. Navat, Georges, Kravitz, Mark. 1977. URSS GLI Scrittori del Descenso. Bukowski, Kalimov, Daniel, Gwinsberg, Pliask, Solzhenitsyn. USSR Writers of Descent. Bukowski, Shalimov, Daniel, Ginsberg, Pliush, Solzhenitsyn. In Italian. Venezia, La Biennale di Venezia. OCLC 797904993. Oshakin, Sergei. Spring 2001. The Terrifying Mimicry of Samizdat. Public Culture. 13 191-214. 10.1215-0899236313-2191. Pospilovsky, Dmitry. January 1978. The Jewish Question in Russian Samizdat. Soviet Jewish Affairs, 8:2, 3 23. Doi 10.1080/13 quadrillion 501,677,808,577,285. Bukowski, Sergei. 1978. From Gosizdat to Samizdat and Tamizdat. Canadian Slavonic Papers. 20, 44 62. doi 10.1080.0008500600.1978.1109151212. JSTOR 40867266. Redaway, Peter. Uncensored Russia – Protest and Dissent in the Soviet Union. The Unofficial Moscow Journal – A Chronicle of Current Events. New York – American Heritage Press. ISBN 0070513546. Ronza, R. 1970. Samizdat, Descenso e Contestazioni nell'Union Sovietica Samizdat, Descent and Protest in the Soviet Union in Italian. 
Milan, IPL. ISBN 8878362034. Saunders, George Samizdat, Voices of the Soviet Opposition. Pathfinder Press. ISBN 0873489144. Scammell, Michael Russia's Other Writers, Selections from Samizdat Literature. Prager. ASIN B001169FR6. Scanlon, James from Samizdat to Perestroika, the Soviet Marxist Critique of Soviet Society. In Teres, Raymond. The Road to Disillusion, From Critical Marxism to Post-Communism in Eastern Europe 2 ed. Routledge. pp. 19-40. ISBN 1317454790. Scanlon, James 1978. The Rise and Fall of the Soviet Underground Press. Communication Quarterly. 26 3, 32 39. doi 101080 01463 3778 093690. Elena. Mir Glazami Dissidenta po Nij v Bukovskogo. I Vos Vrsatsa Quote Closing parenthesis quote. World Through the Eyes of a Dissident about the book of V. Bukovsky The Wind Returns, PDF, Upravlinsko Konsultirovani in Russian 4, 132-138. Archived from the original PDF on 1 March 2016. Charlotte, Robert 1974. Samizdat as a Source for the Study of Soviet Law. The Soviet and Post-Soviet Review, 1, 1 181-196. Doi 10.1163/187633274x00144. Shentalinsky, Vitaly. 1996. Arrested Voices: Resurrecting the Disappeared Writers of the Soviet Regime. Martin Kessler Books, Free Press. ISBN 0684827766x. Slavinsky, Michel. 1970. La Presse Clandestine en URSS, 1960-1970 The Underground Press in the USSR, 1960-1970 in French. Nouvelles Editions Latines. Slonim, Mark 1985. Samizdat, La Presse Clandestine. Samizdat, The Underground Press. Histoire de la littérature russe soviétique History of Soviet Russian Literature in French. Lodge Dumb pp. 315-320. Skilling, Gordon Samizdat and an Independent Society in Central and Eastern Europe. Ohio State University Press. ISBN 0814204872. Stavanovic, Basiljka, Wurtzman, Vladimir Free Voices in Russian Literature, 1950s-1980s, a Biobibliographical Guide to Over 900 Authors. Russica Pubs. ISBN 0898300908. Sversky, Grigory A History of Postwar Soviet Writing, The Literature of Moral Opposition. Ann Arbor, Ardis Publishing. ISBN 0882334492. Tellison, Julius February 1973. Inside. Samizdat. Encounter. 42, 25-33. Toker, Leona Winter 2008. Samizdat and the Problem of Authorial Control, The Case of Varlam Shalimov. Poetics Today, 29 4, 735-758. doi, 10.1215-0333537208-3. Trainer, Jack March to April 1994. Samizdat, The Investment Value of Plant. Financial Analysts Journal. 52, 12-17. doi, 10.2469, FAJ, V50, N2.12. JSTOR 4479725. Trainer, Jack July -August 1993. Samizdat, The Value of Control. Financial Analysts Journal. 49 4, 6-9. doi, 10.2469, FAJ, V49, N4.6.2. 
JSTOR 4479661. Tupikin, Vlad. Vlad Tupikin, 2001. Samizdat Posel Perestrojki. Samizdat after Perestroika. Index on censorship in Russian 13. Vysiye, Cecil, 2014. Archiver les Samizdats de la dissidence russe. Archive of Samizdat by the Russian descent. Acre la histoire in French 13 to 14, 129 to 135. Doi 10.4000 ELH.487. Walters, Philip. August 1980. Christian Samizdat. Index on censorship 9:446-50. Doi 10.1080/03064228008533093. Wall, Josephine, Tremel, Vladimir. 1983. Soviet dissident literature: A critical guide. G. K. Hall. ISBN 0816186626X. Yakushev, Alexei. April 1975. The Samizdat Movement in the USSR: A Note on Spontaneity and Organization. The Russian Review. 34: 186-193. DOI 10.2307/127716. JSTOR 127716. Zalambani, Maria. 2009. Una anti istituzioni, il Samizdat. An anti institution, Samizdat. Censura, istituzioni e politica letteraria in URSS. 1964 1985. Censorship, institutions and literary politics in the USSR. 1964 1985. In Italian. Firenze University Press pp. 125-135. ISBN 8864530754. Wall, Joseph Ian, Vladimir 2008. From Dispersed to Distributed Archives, The Past and the Present of Samizdat Material. Poetics Today, 29 669-712. Doi 10.1215/0333537281. Zisserman Brodsky, Dina. 2003. Constructing Ethnopolitics in the Soviet Union: Samizdat, Deprivation, and the Rise of Ethnic Nationalism. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 1403973628. Topic Insiders Works Andropov, Yuri. May 1995. The Birth of Samizdat. Index on Censorship, 24, 3, 62 63. doi 10.1080 03064229508535948. Delinin, Vyacheslav, Severukin, Dmitry. Samizdat, the Literary Self Publishing Movement in Leningrad 1950s 1980s. Enthymema, 12 doi, 10, 13,132,037-2,426-4,953. Chalidze, Valerie Literaturnier de la KGB de la superfina 8 kinda hegefeka meramzina v prilazini documenti o sovetskij senjur the literary cases of the KGB, the cases of superfin, et kind, hyfits, meramzin, there are documents about Soviet censorship in the application in Russian. New York, Hronika Glazov, Yuri, Winter 1973. Samizdat. Survey, 75-91. Gorbanevskaya, Natalia, 2009. Samizdat et Internet, Samizdat and Internet. Review Rus, in French. 33, 137-143. 1, doi, 10.3406, 10 Rus.2009.2393. Gorbanevskaya, Natalia. January 1977. Writing for Samizdat. Index on censorship 6 1, 29 to 36. Doi 10.1080/03064227708532600. Grigoryants, Sergey. Political Samizdat in Moscow. Uncaptive Minds 2 5 46 to 57. Maltsev, Yuri. 1976. 
L'Altre Lettertura 1957 to 1976, La Lettertura del Samizdat da Pasternak a Solzhenitsyn, The Other Literature 1957 to 1976, The Samizdat Literature from Pasternak to Solzhenitsyn in Italian. Milan, La Casa di Matriona. Maltzu, Jurij 1985, 1981. Frey Russisch Literatur 1955-1980 Free Russian Literature 1955-1980 in German 2 ed. Alstein. ISBN 3548380288X. Medvedev, Roy Spring 1971. Samizdat, Jews in the USSR. Survey, 185-200. Medvedev, Roy, Strada, Vittorio 1977. Descenso e socialismo, una voce marxista del samizdat sovietico Descent and Socialism, a Marxist voice of Soviet samizdat in Italian. Turin, Giulio Inaudi. Medvedev, Roy The Samizdat Register 1. New York, W. W. Norton & Company. ISBN 0393056522X. Medvedev, Roy Samizdat Register 2, Voices of the Socialist Opposition in the Soviet Union. New York, W. W. Norton & Company. ISBN 0393335786. x Sinievsky, Andre Samizdat and the Rebirth of Literature. Index on Censorship, 9 8–13. 0306422800853086 Topic External Links December 1970 report by KGB regarding alarming political tendencies in Samizdat and preventive measures from the Soviet archives collected by Vladimir Bukovsky Alexander Bolonkin, Memoirs of Soviet Political Prisoner Detailing Some Technology Used Anthology of Samizdat Igranov, Vyacheslav, ed. 2005. Ontologia Samizdata. Napodsenzerna Literatura v. Sessor 1950-1980 e, v3h Toma, d 1 Niga 1, do 1966 Anthology of Samizdat. Uncensored Literature in the USSR. The 1950s to 1980s. In three volumes. Volume 1, Book 1, till 1966 PDF in Russian. Moscow. Mezdunarodnij Institut Gumanitarno Politiski Eseldovani. ISBN 5-89793-031-7. Archived PDF from the original on 8 March 2013. Igranov, Vyacheslav, ed. 2005. Ontologia Samizdata. Napodsenzerna Literatura v. Sessor 1950-1980 e, v3h Toma, d 1 Niga 2, do 1966 Anthology of Samizdat. Uncensored Literature in the USSR. The 1950s to 1980s. In three volumes. Volume 1, Book 2, till 1966 PDF in Russian. Moscow. Mezdunarodnij Institut Gumanitarno Politiski Eseldovani. ISBN 5 89793 032 5. Archived PDF from the original on 8 March 2013. Igranov, Vyacheslav, ed. 2005. Ontologia Samizdata. Napodsenzerna Literatura v. Sessor 1950 1980 e, v3h Toma. 2-1966-1973 Anthology of Samizdat. Uncensored Literature in the USSR. The 1950s to 1980s. In three volumes. Volume 2. 1966 1973 PDF in Russian. Moscow. Mezdunarodnij Institut Gumanitarno Politiski Eseldovani. ISBN 5 89793 33 3. Archived PDF from the original on 8 March 2013. Igranov, Vyacheslav, ed. 2005. Ontologia Samizdata. Napodsenzerna Literatura v. Sessor 1950-1980 e, v3h Toma, 3, Posel 1973 Anthology of Samizdat. Uncensored Literature in the USSR. The 1950s to 1980s. In three volumes. Volume 3. After 1973 PDF in Russian. Moscow. Mezdunarodnij Institut Gumanitarno Politiski Eseldovani. ISBN 5-89793-034-1. 
archived PDF from the original on the 8th of March 2013. Matella Boltianskaya, the 16th of March 2016. Episode 4: The Samizdat and the Internet. Voice of America. Parallels, events, people. Samizdat Archive Vichy Veki Library in Russian. Anthology of Czech Samizdat Periodicals Archive of Robert Haveman Society E. V. Berlin Arbeitsgruppe Menschenrecht, Arbeitskreis Gerichtigkeit HRSG, Die Muck. Documentation der Uranis in Leipzig, DDR Samizdat, Leipzig, Mars 1989. IFM Archive Zoxen E. V. Internet Collection of DDR Samizdat DDR Samizdat in Archive Bergerbewegung Leipzig Umweltbibliothek Grohenersdorf e. v. DDR Samizdat in the IISG Amsterdam. Samizdat. Poem by Jared Carter. Chronicle of Current Events. By Memorial Society.